So guys, I was talking to my friend Ephraim today, and we were just talking about the whole thing of, um, you know, look around you and you, and you see what's going on and you realize that the people that are, you know, part of, I guess you can say the evil side of things, what we call the Sitrachra. They are going full steam ahead, full speed ahead. And they're doing so primarily, I mean, apart from the fact that they want power, uh, they know that if they fail, that they are all going to, at best, they're going to prison. Or maybe at best they're going to lose their, you know, people are going to know that they're frauds and they're not, they'll never work in quote-unquote this town again. And at worst, they're going to go to prison. Maybe even something worse than that. And uh, we realize that uh, you're seeing this, what you're seeing in front of you ramp up more and more and more and more and faster and faster. You know, you're talking about people getting arrested for going to, like, Cheesecake Factory without a Smacks Pass, you know, as opposed to criminals getting away with what they get away with every single day. Let's say, I'm just talking about New York, right? And there's other cities this is happening in, right? So, we understand that these people are clamping down, and they are going full speed ahead, and yet there are places in, you know, let's say in America and around the world where they are losing, they're losing. Either they're losing in the PR battle, in the legal battle, uh, you know, the the public perception battle, they're, lo they're, they're losing, they're going to lose, you know, and, and the media is not really publicizing their losses, right, because the media is in cahoots with them, right, they're not going to publicize, oh, we lost this battle, you know what I mean, uh, they're only publicizing their wins, or so to speak, their, you know, whatever they're going to do, or whatever it is that they're doing, that's the only thing they're li re really li shining a light on, right, they're not going to shine, shine a light on the fact that uh, there's some court case somewhere, where they want to, you know, they need 55 or 70 years to release documents, right? They're not going to shine a light on that. Maybe one sort, one uh, kind of what's con called control opposition is going to shine a light on that. Everything else they're just going to sweep under the rug. You know, my friends today, the Ministry of, uh, what I call the Ministry of Silly Walks in Israel, the people who claim to be the Ministry of Health, published a slander piece a slander piece, you know, complete with a picture and a whole litany of things, like a, like a, like a, like a paragraphs upon paragraphs about the certain doctor, uh, who was involved with, uh, you know, the development, he, you know, he was involved as a, as a, as a PhD student at the time, but he was very, very involved with it, development of the technology that's being used inside the new, you know, what they're being, we're being forced to take. And he's been he's been very vocal about how there's problems, right? How they're how we it's implemented too fast, too soon. Uh, how how these things are causing this the things that we are seeing the new things coming you know to come out Shmomiron, and the one before that and the one before that how doing that too fast causes them. Not how not doing it too fast may squash it, or may prevent the next ones, but how actually doing that too fast may create what's called evolutionary pressure to cause the new guys, the new things. How do we know that? Because now we guys, we see people who are triple, you know what, in certain universities are, you know, they got the, they got the ailment and they had to close down these universities, my friends. Idiocy, right? So these people are going forward with their Lush and Horror campaigns, with their slander campaigns, with their, with basically their lies. Uh, accusing p others of hurting, you know, giving advice that hurts people as they, they're just saying things. They're like, this is hurting people. How many people are would hurt? Did it hurt anybody? Can they prove it? They don't know. They're just saying something to say. It's just something to say, right? Something to play on our heartstrings. As opposed to, as opposed to, actually, what they've done, which has actually hurt at least a certain amount of people. And when you come out and say that, people say, well, you know, like I said yesterday, People say, well, you know, it's sad, but, you know, think of all the mil bazillions of people have taken it. It's very rare. My friends, you know, I wonder if one of their family members, if one of their friends was hurt by this thing, 
what would they then do? Would they have empathy or would they just say, you know, oh, it's unfortunate, but, you know, look at all. It's, my friends, it's, it's, it's like the ultimate kamikaze mission that they've, that they've sent us on, you know, and this is multi-leveled stuff, multi-layered stuff. You know, you have the people who are at the top who actually don't care at all, who are trying to actually actively remove people from this, this earth. Then there are the people kind of mid-level who are saying, well, you know, in every single one of these kind of things, you're going to have people who are going to, there's going to be issues, but by and large, there's no issues by and large, you know, 99. And then you come in, and then you have the next level of people who are just the people who are developing the thing, who think who are just running steam ahead because they are excited about what they've been involved in on a scientific level. And they're just caught up in it. Right. And they're just saying, well, I'm doing this amazing thing. And I'm participating in this amazing thing, and everybody's heaping praise on me. And you have this guy in Germany, the Turkish guy, who also is, in, you know, he developed this, him and his wife, and he's being, you know, they're getting nice, amazing, beautiful covers on magazines. And Dr. Mousy is getting a cover on magazines. My friends, everything looks glossy, and wonderful, and produced, and 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 you know, uh, airbrushed. Everything looks fantastic, right, my friends? And then, you know, and we're going full steam ahead with this wonderful, mainstream, popular, mainstream, amazing this thing, you know, my friends. And then when you cut down to the reality of it, it's not so glossy and it's not so shiny and it's not so uh, beautiful and it's not. And, and while it may be impressive how it was done, it may just be too quick, too soon, too much, right? We may be getting ahead of ourselves, my friends. But, my friends, the people at the top of this chain of insanity are the ones that are going full steam ahead because they have to, my friends, because they know that if they are found out, if they lose, if they are not able to carry out their plan to its bitter end, they are going to meet a very, very horrible end themselves. They know that in the back of their mind. There's a microchip in the back of their mind. They kn knows that. Speaking of microchips, guys, just saw a clip of the CEO of one of these companies saying, you know, we have this little chip inside of the pill that we're going to give to people that you can track how many pills they took, how many this, how many that, who is immune, who is not. My friends, th this, these are things that are coming out of their own mouths. These are not things that I'm inventing or I read somewhere on some conspiracy, conspiracy site. These are things that are coming out of their own mouths, from the horse's mouth, my friends. All we got to do is just listen, open up our ears and listen. That's it, my friends. These people ultimately are not going to have a leg to stand on. They are going to lose. The, the problem is, as we know history, before people like this lose, before these groups of people lose, they go full steam ahead and they hurt as many people as possible. Some people don't, some of them don't realize that they're going to, they're hurting people. They think they're helping. Some, some of them realize they're hurting people. They don't even care. Some of them are just, you know, they, they are just at this point, it's too late to stop now. You know, some of them are being kind of coerced and forced themselves into doing it by their bosses. You know, my friends, they're, they are too, in, like, a, like, like this guy I argue with said, you know, a lot of people are too invested in their own thing. They're too bought in. They're, they're what's called in, in poker, pot committed. Pot committed. These guys are pot committed. Mr. Mousy is pot committed. Mr. Shmula is pot committed. My friends, they're all in. They're all in. And you know what? They're trying to bluff. This is the biggest bluff in history. And what they don't realize is that uh, what's about to come out on the, uh, you know, in the flop, in the turn card, and in the river card, right? And in the river card is about to be the card that's going to give us, you know, the 30% that are, that are awake and the 40% who are also seeing what's going on, but in the silent majority. So basically the 70 to 75% of us and the rest of us by extension, because they will eventually will have no choice but to wake up. The river card is about to come, and my friends, we're about to get that royal flush, which is going to obliterate whatever, you know, two pair or whatever, I don't know, a two and a seven these people may be holding. My friends, these people are holding, holding a two and a seven. They got you to think. They got you to think 
that they are the ones that are holding the full house or the or the flush or or i don't know or you know four of a kind my friends maybe they are holding four of a kind maybe they are maybe there's maybe two aces came out and we don't got no way you know i mean granted we, if we have a royal flush we have an ace right whatever they they got you to think that they're holding four kings my friends but the river card's coming out. The river card's coming out. And my friends, we're, we, all we have to do is have enough cojones to call their all-in bet. They're all-in bet and they're bl- really their biggest bluff ever. That's all we have to do. We have to sit there at the table and we have to just look at them with their sunglasses, right? And say this guy is a monu- these guys are mon- monumental BS artists. Okay, that's all we have to do, guys. That's all we have to do. And they've convinced the entire room that they're holding some kind of hand, and we know they ain't holding nothing. And we know the royal flush is coming out, and that's basically it, guys. In fact, guys, we don't even need the royal flush. We actually only need maybe just to hold with our three of a kind. Or hold with our, I don't know, regular flush that we already have. And just believe that the hand that we have is is way better than the two and the seven that they're holding. That they're trying to convince us that they have something. Guys, I'm telling you. That's it. And they are pot committed and they can't stop. They can't. They have no choice. They have no choice. Otherwise, they're just, I mean, they have no choice. <laughs> Otherwise, if they play it straight, right, they're just going to lose. They're just going to lose because they ain't got the chips, right? They have nothing to stand on, ultimately, these guys. But the the, the perception and the and the illusion of their legit, legitimacy and the illusion of their repu, reputable sources and the reputability and the illusion. My friends, this is all, they created a wonderful illusion, a wonderful psyop, a wonderful you know, propaganda machine, and they're doing it in concert at the same time, simultaneously, with the same messaging, and then when you, and then, and then they're doing this kind of thing where they're making you feel better, where they actually address, supposedly address people's concerns, but in a way that's kind of like, yeah, but you see that this is why this is this, it's not, don't believe your lying eyes, believe what we're telling, explaining to you what you're, you know, at what you're looking at, guys. Don't believe your lying eyes, guys. You're not smart enough to believe. You're not educated enough to believe your lying eyes. You're not trained enough to read the data, which is so obvious a little kid can read it and understand what's going, what's there, my friends. Okay. Anyway, guys, I just want to give everybody a bracha. Again, I just gave everybody a bracha, uh, friends and family, Last week, it was my Hebrew birthday for clarity. I just want to extend that bracha to you guys. Just clarity. Nothing but clarity, you know? And, uh, you know, that's basically it. That's all I got. (laughs) Just wait, my friend said, just waiting for the logical outcome. Listen, it's not a question of logical. A friend of mine said, you know, the world has gone into, how should I put this? Essentially, unrecognizable unrecognizability and I said well in order for the olamazeh like this world that we know as we know it to to end in order for Mashiach to come and olama ba to come and for us to have tiyat emetim resurrection of the dead we need to have a completely unrecognizable world right and before that happens sorry before that happens <clears throat> um, we're going to go through this like cosmic blender that's what we're going through now my friends we're going through we're in a blender or the blender, and uh, you know, you got the fruit, the raw. Here you go. You got the raw fruit. <laughs> got some. There you go. Good Shabbos. So, in order to get a shake out of that, right? Once you get the shake, it's kind of completely unrecognizable from what it was when it was in the state, right? But you got to go through that blender, and that blender, if you're not careful, you know. You gotta close it. If you don't close it, you got everything flying around. And even in the blender, it's just, you know, flipping and 
you get all the all the re, all the stuff you know residual. So yeah, guys, I mean, we're in the blender now, and uh, when you're in the blender, you don't understand like what is this all for. But you know, it's all for something, guys. Just just know that it's all for something. All right, guys, it's been real, and uh, Shabbat Shalom, and I'll talk to you guys very very soon.